everyone. Let me uh, also let me do this video on. This is going to be on just to get you started on this lab program exercise two dash three. So um, once you click into this, you, once you log into your chapter two program exercise for your lab section for this, um, you will actually start in. Um, let me close up the last one with it. And you click on this. It'll give you a window. Start to load up. Um, your subscription to uh, MindTap with it. And click on Start Windows Now with it. Um, you do this with any browser with it. So this is basically it tells you uh, a little bit about what to do when each one of these exercises and you start on this with it. Uh, read through this. They kind of gave you the place where you put the code. This is the area where you test it. All right. Uh, so you walk through this with me with it. Now, right now it says write a C++ statement that includes that allows you to do C in, C out, and N out. Well, hopefully you know that's going to be here with it. So the first thing that they want you to t type up is, I click back on this, is write an IO stream statement on this. This is the first one with it. So coming over here, what is that? So you do pound include IO stream. Okay, this is the only statement without a semicolon. Everything else, mostly, it's going to be have a semicolon to close off to end the statement. So that takes care of that. That allows you to actually do the input-output stream, meaning that you're reading input-output of data coming in and out of this main file. Uh, click on the next one. It will tell you write a C++ statement that allows you to do C in, C out, and NL without a prefix of std colon colon. So you can do something like this by saying using name space std. So this allows you again to do C in, meaning you're reading in data, storing things in a variable. C out means to prompt a statement on screen. NL means to move to the next line on the statement with it. I'm going to click on the next one. Now, they want you to write a C++ statement that actually declares the following variables, num1, num2, num3, and average as int data type. The place that you can actually declare it, I'm going to tab over, indent in, and in all of my statements in here, so it makes readability a lot easier with it. I start with the data type is int. They tell you type is int, and you can do num1, num2, num3, and average. Okay, so. I did everything in one line with it as well. Okay, so click on the next one. And this kind of steps you through each one of the steps with it. Now, the way how I did this, I can't assign numbers to this. So what I need to do is I need to assign each one of these things to a certain value. We call that initialization. They want the first one to be initialized to num1 to have 125 stored into it. So it ends in a semicolon in num2. That needs to be equal to uh, 28. Let me spread this out. The white spaces don't really, um, your compiler doesn't have an issue with white spaces with it. Next one is going to be negative 25 for num3. So I'm going to do int num3 equals negative 25. So three numbers store into three variables at this time with, as you can see, the equal sign means the right side equals the left side. The right side equals the left side. And this negative 25 equals the memory of an int data type is in num3. Next, it wants me to take the average of these three and store into average with it. So I need to declare the variable average with it. I can do this on the fly. Let me do that on here. So if I had to do I could do it here. I could do average here with it. That's one way of doing it. The other way I could do this is where I execute the statement on this thing is to do int average and I could actually have what? num1 plus num plus num2 plus num3. Now the average, I don't know about you, but I have to do the math first with this as parentheses. So I add up all three numbers first before I divide into the number of elements that I have, which is in this case is three numbers, right? And ends with a semicolon. So that takes care of that. Now, come over to the next statement with this. It says write a final step. I actually, I actually have to write a C out statement 
all right, write a C++ statement that outputs the value of num1, num2, num3. So I would need to have a C out. How do I get to use the C out? Because of the using namespace std. So I would put in the lesser, lesser than sign, which is called the stream insertion operator. Stream insertion operator. This is your stream insertion op. What are you? Why is this inserting? You are writing this as the ref from the reference of the source code, inserting into the output screen. That's why it's a. That's why it's called the stream insertion operator. And you put that in a quote. In this case, we'll say something along the line of uh, the following: uh, the average of all three numbers are. Okay, and you can do something like this, and you would actually do average. This average is this average right here, okay, this variable right here. Easy way to do it, uh, I can highlight that, paste that right here, make sure my spellings are all properly, and I can need I need to do an NL insertion again, another one, NL, to end that statement in there as well. So one way to check is if you like come over here, and you notice that I'm out of my right you know, error already, so I will come over to my checkbox, click on that, make sure my headers, it checks it for me, make sure my namespace statement is checked, I make sure my correct values are all my variables are up to the screen, okay, so it's looking, it's looking, so I, this is not working, so it's incomplete, what it needs for me to do is to output correct values of all variables I'll put to the screen. So I need to output my num1, num2, num3 memory into the up to the screen. How do I do that? Well, we need to do C out, put a string in there, num1 equal, then I come over to the right of that. What do I insert here? Num1 variable with it as well. Okay, so I actually do and now with it. So let me just copy one of these things and I could actually paste it for the next and edit that little bit with it. So I need to output as this is this will be number two. Change this variable to two. Change this one to three. Change this one to three. Okay. So C out insertion operator. This is the literal the literal string that's going to output. Again, I'm, this is the variable. Num one is this num one right here, which is 125. Num2 is this num2 over here, which is, has 28 stored in it. Num3 is this num3, which has negative 25. Now, come back here, click on that variable again, that little check mark. See, um, all variables initialized correctly. Okay, looks good. With it, all variables declare it as an int type. Looks good. Look, voila. Now, I got. I can come over to the right hand side, click on the play button. This is the test button you can see. As you can see in the right hand side, here's my output. This outputs from these three lines right here. Line number 19 to 21 produces these three lines. The average of all three numbers are 42. So it adds up and divided by the three numbers and that's the, this average is this average right here. So just, just for kicks, I just wanna make sure the math is done right here. I'm going to move, turn on the calculator, clear my screen. I'm going to take three numbers, 125 plus 28 plus negative 25. That should give me 128 with it. Divide that into three. That should give me 42.66, and I round that off as an int, so that makes it into a 42. Yes, that's right, because... The int, look at this, if you round this off, this should be 43, correct? However, the data type of an int just drops off the decimal on this thing. So you are losing precision on this, that's my point. The accuracy is not correct because we have done as an int with this. So that's where it's gone wrong with this. We'll talk about how when you declare and round off the proper way of doing this, but this is not the correct answer because we're using the data types as an int. All right, until next time, thanks.